So in this segment, everyone, what we want to cover is a little bit about the design, because there was a lot of work that went into this. And as you can imagine, in any home, you have a design phase, you've got the, you know, the, the bidding phase, and there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. And there was a lot of really kind of interesting feedback that you guys received from the parade itself. So in this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about overall design and have Jonathan walk you through why the decision was made to do some of the things that they did. So sure. walk us through it. All right. Well, let's start with the basics of this house. This house is a four bedroom, three and a half bath, um, which is a little bit bigger than we are typically would design. Uh, but we wanted to have enough rooms to show off different things that were going on and how we we're going to do it. So it was actually by the design. We're 2,700 on the first floor and we're 500 downstairs. And we have a bunch of unique fee features that we wouldn't typically see um, in, I would say, in the late 2000s type design. We actually thought about taking it back to the 30s and 40s and what was important then culturally, how we interacted with our, uh, our neighborhood. So one of the biggest things that you'll see is where's the kitchen? So right now we're taping in the great room and the dining room. And I would say historically we would have seen the kitchen behind us. But the feedback that we got for Parade was really unbelievable in the fact that I'm standing now at when I come in the door I look and I look right out to my beautiful backyard. I look through my great room. I look through a dining room into a sunroom. But I still don't see a kitchen yet. And people love that. I mean, I, it's just, it was really neat to hear them go, you know, I just keep my dishes out. I mean, do you keep your dishes out? That's how, that's how I am. I, I kind of leave them there to the evening and walking in and seeing them there or coming in from the garage. It just, it, everybody kept saying it's just it's something that's irritated them, but they thought that's the design right now. So it's really kind of neat in the fact that if, as we walk back, I'll stop so you can see over my shoulder, the kitchen's actually directly behind me now. And not that... Um, that's anything new. Again, our earlier designs had it behind it, but we're actually engaging the community again. We had this shift over the last 20 years of actually building these beautiful backyards and doing these different things and moving ourselves away from the street pride presence. And I actually see, and we're seeing it kind of across the United States, this shift back to we're putting sidewalks back in, we're engaging people outside again. And so that design of putting the kitchen up there, not only did it hide it from, you know, kind of the view from the front door per se, but it also gave us the opportunity to look out the window and see the kids in our driveway and see who was entering us. And so it was really neat to hear those people talk about that when they came in um, when they were touring during the parade because they felt that warmth and they kept using that word warmth and I think that's it, it, emotionally our homes shouldn't feel cold they should feel warm and they should feel inviting and it was it was nice and we kind of want to hide the things that I mean quite honestly we all have stuff you know and we get more and more stuff and people appreciated the fact that when I walked in the door I didn't see my stuff I saw the things that really mattered to me and I could greet someone at the door and not feel like I had to go rush and hide stuff off the countertop in case they were coming in. Well, and I think, too, to your point, even our downtown areas are now, you know, redeveloping. We're, 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 I think we've realized as a society that we do, to some degree, we like that community again. And we somehow lost that. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about some things that we see in here, such as, you know, the ceiling height, as an yeah. example. So we had some feedback on that. Lots of feedback. Everybody walked in and went, where's the cathedrals? We're in a ranch. Jonathan, where's all the cathedrals? Like, I wanted this thing to open up and walk away, and it was actually designed at nine foot ceiling height, so we're a foot higher than we typically would, would actually build. Um, so we get our height based on that, but we, the cathedrals in, when we think about healthy and even more energy efficient, we fill a lot of space with hot and cold air. And so our thought there was, you know what, I can create volume and openness without having to fill that void with a lot of air. Um, also keeps our HVAC system from having to work as hard to clean the air, which we'll talk about in another segment. Um, but it was designed, but one of the things that people kept commenting on is because of how open and how great the concept and the layout is, it didn't really need the cathedrals. Uh, so that was, that was really kind of neat. Uh, some of the other things, though, to bring back that is to we, open concept is great. And I'm, if you have an open concept plan, I would imagine the biggest thing that you struggle with is where do I put things? So if I'm in a big rectangle that's got three rooms in it, I have to figure out how to design it design based on like putting furniture, but I'm not really good at that. That's what a lot of people say to me. You know, I don't know where to, how far couches should be from different things. So what we did here is instead of actually putting walls in and defining spaces like we used to do back in the 30s and 40s, we actually reintroduced the arch. And I say reintroduce because I would arguably say there aren't a whole lot of homes that are putting those arches still in nowadays. We've gone to square openings, we've kind of gone more of a modern design, but we've lost the softness and that warmth again from an arch. So another comment that was, pre was prevalent through the whole parade was, 
wow, it's nice to see a little bit of architecture come back. And we see that not only in the arches that we've placed here, but we've got niches throughout. And so there's a lot of different character pieces that were used in this house so that we didn't have to, again, have the extraordinary of cathedrals. We could do it in architectural pieces instead. Well, and you still maintain the dimensional aspect that you need <laughs> from room to room. So you still have the arch, you still have obviously some transitions here that clearly define this as the great room, clearly define this as a dining area. So you didn't lose those, but mm -hmm. you maintain the open concept. You maintain the fact that not only healthy, but from a cost savings perspective, energy efficiency as well. Correct. And in this house throughout, uh, there are only four light fixtures that do not have LED lighting, and they happen to be the exterior ones, and only because they look really cool, and we can't get them an LED. So and really the, cool is still really cool. It's still really cool. At the end of the day, we you know we, we all have to live in these things. So, it, it, but you will notice throughout as you walk through here that another comment was, "Boy, LED lighting. I would have thought it would be a lot of." whites and gray and it just it has a harsh light and none of the light fixtures here anybody knew were led so we did a really good job with, with the warm tones and the led so you'll never have to replace a single light in this house well and the good news is that obviously technology has, has just come tremendously uh further than it has been so uh, we wanted to give you a little bit of a of an overview of the uh of the design aspect of it we thank you for that so in our next segments we're going to cover just about every part of the house so let's go to those next <laughs> 